Now, them youngins was smoking them dippers, i.e. PCP, which for real, to me, is worse than crack because at least when you smoke crack, you don't find your friend and try to eat out his intestines or, 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 or chop up your children in a bathtub and leave them there for dead because you think they demon. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please like, share, comment respectfully, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. For these, I think these are the Miss Hollywood DC frames in black gradient. I think that's what they call it. And because I'm trying to inspire you all to revisit uptopbeauty.com, all shades are $25. And if you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it if the YouTube gets it. One, the members already know what this next book is. Two, for those of you who have recently joined the book club, whether it be through the YouTube paid membership or the Patreon paid membership, your $5 is so greatly appreciated. Now, let's read Faith Evans. Keep the faith. It's a good book. Y'all, before we get started, you know if you hear some snores, that's just Lulu. Okay, you know he got to be right up under me. He was tripping this morning, y'all. Like I went upstairs to put some clothes in the uh, washing machine. When I came back down, he was sucking on my retainer. I told my grandmother that I wasn't really feeling the gospel group, but she brushed me off. I could have been more forceful about what I wanted, but I just didn't know how to plead my case. One great thing that came out of working with the group was my introduction to Tyrone Holmes. Tyrone was related to the woman who started the gospel group. He had a tiny home studio out in the Bronx and we went out there occasionally to work on music. I learned a lot from Tyrone about how music is produced. I had already figured out how to write a song, but at Tyrone's house, I learned some of the technical aspects of recording. Although I didn't learn to use all the equipment, I learned how to record and then equalize my vocals. During this time, I was really into stacking my harmonies. It started with the outgoing voicemails on my answering machine. I'd sing the parts over and over to make it sound like I had a whole group performing. I wanted it to have the lush, rich sound that the Clark sisters had but I didn't have three sisters to fill out my vocals. So I'd stack my own vocals on top of each other. I'd sing a chorus or a hook three times in a contralto. Then I'd sing it three more times in a mezzo soprano, and then three more times in a soprano. Then I'd stack all nine versions together and blend them to make a full Faith Evans choir. Damn, Faith. Pause, Damn. God damn it! I said pause. You know Usher's song, one of my favorite Usher songs. I'll be your groupie, baby, because you are my superstar. Did you know that that was Faith's vocals blending beautifully with the Usher? Go listen to it. Right now. I would try this kind of stuff out at Tyrone's house, and I even let him listen to some of my first attempts at songwriting. 
He was very encouraging and urged me to continue writing and record recording. I started feeling again that it was time to move on from Mrs. Wilson's gospel group. I prepared to tell my grandmother once more that I wanted to quit the group. This time I wrote her a letter. In the letter I told her that I was leaving the group permanently and that I wasn't entertaining any idea about staying. I had the nerve to get all dramatic in my letter too. The first line was, as of this day, I renounce my standing in this group. My grandmother was upset, but she saw that I was serious and told me I was free to make my own decision. Trickery. By high school, I had a bit more freedom. And the more freedom I had, the more my lifestyle changed, depending on where I was. At home, I was still fey, sweet, and well-behaved. I attended University High School, one of the top-ranked public schools in the area at the time. They had a special program for academically gifted students. If you had the grades and passed certain tests, you could attend the school beginning in seventh grade. In addition to being in this gifted and talented program, I was also an honor student in advanced placement classes. Look, I'm sorry, you're gonna hear like snorts. I don't know what's going on. Um, the pollen was really heavy today, so Lulu's having some concerns. I wiped his nose out, but he's still having some trouble with breathing. But you know, these Frenchies be snoring anyway, y'all. So show my baby mercy when you hear them grunts and them snorts. By the late 1980s, Newark had been crushed by the crack cocaine epidemic, and students who were focused on education and who had bright academic futures were rare. I knew far too many people who were dropping out of school and having babies. Pause, let me say this. It was something different about D.C. and New York and New Jersey further up. Because you would find young people that smoke dippers or PCP, love boat, water, whatever you want to call it. But it wasn't too many young people that smoked crack. Like it was like it was beneath the dudes from D.C. But in New York and further up, it was a party drug. I'm not saying that it wasn't nobody in D.C. that did drugs because, oh my goodness, I would never forget this young girl, 17 years old. She was lost and turned out long before she put that pipe to her lips. She kind of remind me of that little boy from The Wire who just didn't have no family structure whatsoever and she was just lost and turned out, man. And somebody, an older person introduced her to crack at like 17 years old. But she was the only young girl that I knew that did crack. Now, them youngins was smoking them dippers, i.e. PCP, which for real, to me, is worse than crack. Because at least when you smoke crack, you don't, you know, find your friend and you know, try to eat out his intestines or, 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 or chop up your children in a bathtub and leave them there for dead because you think they demons. But it's just, it just was different because when I seen that movie Lean On Me and the little boy who was in high school that was smoking crack, I was like, he, he smoking crack in high school? I mean, I knew the dudes that sold it, but I never knew any of the dudes that smoked it. Now dig this, as I got older, I found out that them young dudes was doing that cocaine cause all of them, that boogity sugary, because all of them thought they were Scarface, Tony Montana, or they wanted to be Scarface, and Scarface was on that boogity sugary. So I ain't saying, you know, that them youngins was drug free. What I'm saying is that you wasn't seeing them youngins smoking crack until they got older 
And 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 that weed wasn't doing it for them then, anymore. Now everybody on them damn pills. Leave them damn pills away from me. Them 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 mother hunchies are addictive. Stay away from them. Once I discovered boys, it was on. And because of the tight knit environment of my grandparents' home, I went right for the bad boys. There had been small crushes in elementary and middle school. The first boy I really liked was a quiet, polite young man named Reggie, who was the brother of my good friend, Roz, from school. But once I started to really date, I went for the boys with swagger and a cocky attitude. Wow. Hmm. I don't know what it is about us girls when that them bad boys, child, because all they do is beat you up and take your puss and, 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 and run scams on you and bring girls home to your bedroom. I don't know what that's about. In high school, it was someone I'll call JT. I met him at McDonald's right in downtown Newark. I had just ordered my food when he walked up and paid for it before I could. Ooh, smooth, JT. Real, real smooth, baby. He wasn't super handsome, but then again, I would never really go for the super handsome type. He was brown skinned, medium build, and not much taller than me, but he carried himself well. He was dressed nicely and I could tell that he was older and had a little something going on. It turned out that he was a small time drug dealer. That didn't faze me at all. I thought I was grown and we started dating right away. He had his own apartment near downtown Newark and everything we did together was new and exciting. Baby, the one thing that I will always have that nobody can take away from me, not that damn degree that I spent years and years trying to obtain around there to the university, but it's the crack era. Man, I'm telling you, being alive during that time, we went on real dates. We would take the train into Manhattan to his favorite Italian restaurant near Central Park, and we'd walk around the city afterwards. I would tag along with him when he went to the Diamond District to buy his little gold rope chains and 3D rings from Manny's Jewelry Store. That's how we were back home in D.C. At, in Georgetown. Man, it was so special when you could just hang out in Georgetown and just bump into somebody. I loved it. Things got serious pretty quickly. I started going to JT's apartment after school. I even had my own key and hanging out for as long as I could. I kept it all from my grandparents for quite some time. I told them I was studying with a friend or singing here or there to keep them from finding out. But a friend's mother learned of the relationship and told my grandparents. My grandparents didn't like it one bit. They came down to JT's apartment looking for me a few times. I stayed one step ahead of them, avoiding them. I stayed at JT's place for a few days, refusing to go home. Oh my goodness, because you just did not want it to end, man. Recently, y'all, I'm so happy I found a Judy. I found a Judy at work. I am so happy, y'all. She just, like, I don't feel so alone down here in Atlanta. I mean, she's new, but, you know, we'll see how it turns out, but... I'm going to take her with me to go see Mickey Howard when Mickey comes down here. She'll talk to me about things, and I just be falling in love with her stories. And I be like, girl, I am so romantic. I just don't want to fall into that bullshit of romance anymore because I've had my time at romance. And I was telling her, man, in my younger years, especially in the 80s, I've experienced so many beautiful things. Being able to do whatever I want to do eat at the fanciest restaurants, be with the most, uh, you know, established men in regards to drugs, ride around in the most fanciest cars. Like, and, um, this one guy, 
actually my the first Leo I ever loved. He took me to the Wingate Hotel. Yes, where that Nixon scandal happened. And while I was there, I couldn't even believe, because I'm a history buff too, that damn, this is the place where it all went down with Nixon. That goddamn Texan was an amazing man too. Oh, he would fuck prostitutes, but he damn sure knew how to take a woman on a date. But I have experienced some of the most beautiful moments in life. Messing around with them drug dealers from DC. I just did not want those moments to end. So I would get missing. My mama would have to look for me. Child, I'd be dazed and it was only because I didn't want that fantasy to end. I stayed at JT's place for a few days, refusing to go home. Finally, he took me home and met my grandparents for the first time. I have to give JT credit. He made me go home and told me it was wrong to disrespect my grandparents. I'd, I made a point. I didn't want to be sheltered and treated like a child anymore. I wanted to come and go as I pleased. Yeah, me too. And yeah, okay. Until I figured out that most of them dudes that I was so in love with, when they wasn't with me, they was with another bitch, you know. But while I was with them, I was with them. But things with JT quickly took a turn for the worse. I was in love with him and the feelings were mutual. But he had a mean streak and could be very jealous. If he even heard that I was talking to another guy, any guy, he would grill me about it for hours. It would drive me crazy, and we'd end up arguing and pushing each other around. But soon it became much deeper. Yeah,